Thanks so much for joining us. We heard Nita there talking about the diversity in Nevada, much more diverse than these first two states that already voted. Do you think that means the outcome will be different, and how so? Uh, I think that, for it, if anything, this kind of validates some of the questions that we had coming out of Iowa about Bernie Sanders and Pete Buttigieg and who was the real winner and what that meant going forward. Uh, where Pete has been a person who has an issue with minority voters and there's been a question about whether that will continue. Uh, and Bernie Sanders has been arguing that he's the person who can reach the broadest parts of the party. And so today, kind of with this lead, I think Sanders can continue to argue that he is the person who can reach the most people. Because Nevada has such a diverse population. Exactly. Uh, you argue in your book, The Great Migration, that the movement of uh, black Americans from the South to other parts of the country has really helped the Democratic Party. How so? Yeah, I think that uh, it's been the case that they have been moved along in their thinking about racial issues because they have had to engage with different groups of voters. And so if we were thinking about a Iowa or a New Hampshire, they have kind of different issues because they're predominantly white than people in other parts of the nation. And so when you start to think about why the Democratic Party might take positions that are sensitive to uh, issues of race or sensitive to issues of sexuality, they're taking these positions because they need to bring more people in. And so as we move to these other states like Nevada and South Carolina, you'll see that Democrats are starting to make uh, statements and have positions that are broader than the positions that they might start with that usually just consider the economy and don't name names about the people, the groups of people they're interested in. Republicans have argued that Democrats take the black vote for granted. And we saw in his State of the Union address Donald Trump trying to appeal perhaps to African Americans, naming several uh, in the chamber there, pointing them out, uh, the girl who wanted to go to a charter school, uh, obviously the, the Air Force. Um, do you think these efforts are going to help him out? Is this pandering? Uh, it's definitely pandering, uh, but I think that all politicians pander at some point, and so it's not totally unheard of that you would see a, a candidate doing that. And the other thing I thought was interesting from Donald Trump was a commercial during the Super Bowl where he's very clearly talking about his role on uh, criminal justice stuff. And so I think that some black people might be swayed by this, but probably not a large number of them. I think that many black people have a notion of Donald Trump as a person who doesn't have their interests at heart in terms of race or in terms of class issues. And so for that reason, even though he's doing this kind of posturing in the State of the Union address and during Super Bowl with commercials, I don't think folks will come over. And for our voters, uh, African Americans vote overwhelmingly Democratic. Uh, we should note South Carolina is the next state after yeah. Nevada. This is a state where the black vote is obviously uh, crucial. Uh, Joe Biden's counting on it. Pete Buttigieg, as he mentioned, is something he's challenged by. Um, obviously, black voters are not monolithic voters, but can you l explain a little bit about what you expect from their vote, what they're voting for? Yeah, I think that when you think about the Democratic Party, you have to think about it as a big tent party, which basically means it has many different groups of people that it's interested in. But we know that black voters overwhelmingly support the Democratic Party, and we know they turn out in very large numbers. And so if you're a Democratic candidate, you want to figure out how to get black support in the largest numbers possible as a foundation that kind of lets you deal with other groups in ways that you might not have space to do otherwise. And so for South Carolina, it's going to be a very big deal for Joe Biden. He seems to be having a good night so far in Nevada, and that's good. Uh, but he really needs South Carolina to work in order to have this debate about him being the one person who can beat Trump. There has been some diversity on the Democratic stage, uh, gay candidate, Jewish candidate, female candidates, but not the perhaps color diversity that many had wanted, expected early on. Do you believe that whoever is the presidential candidate, they will need to have an African-American uh, vice president to really rally African-American supporters? I sure think that it would help a lot. And Stacey Abrams, who ran for governor in the state of Georgia, has been making the claim very clearly, I'm willing to be vice president for anybody who wants me to be vice president. And so I don't think she's doing that without the idea that anybody who wants to get the black vote or even who wants to get people excited about this election is going to need some kind of star power. So a Stacey Abrams, an Andrew Gillum, somebody who's going to get the people going would be good. Andrew Gillum from Florida would be a very important state for anyone wanting to win the presidency. Exactly. Uh, Kenesha Grant, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me.